Okay, thank you for inviting us today. Uh, th this is a kind of unique uh, project that, that we started off with a public launch last week in, in Dublin. It's Atheist Ireland, the Evangelical Alliance of Ireland, and the Amadea Muslim Community in Ireland. Acknowledging that we have very different worldviews, but uniting on the fact that we are all discriminated against in our different ways by the Irish state's support and preference that it gives mainly to one religion, which is the dominant religion of the state. Now, we believe strongly in the right of uh, everybody to hold their own religious or non-religious beliefs, and we believe that the only way for all of those beliefs to be protected equally is for the state to remain neutral. And for this type of interbelief dialogue that is happening today, it is very useful to happen between members of different belief groups, but with none of them being given preference by the state, and particular, particular reference to secular education. So I'm going to ask uh, Nick Park first from the, the Evangelical Alliance to say a few words, then, then Jane Donnelly, and then uh, Imam Ibrahim Nunan, and then if we time, we'll we just uh, take a few questions or, or tease things out a bit more. Thank you, Michael. Uh, I'm glad we're sitting down here. When I came in and saw the colour of the rostrum and the shirt I've got on, I thought I was just going to look like an extension to the <laughs> rostrum. Um, I, I represent the Evangelical Alliance, and there are about uh, something over 100,000 Evangelical Christians in the Republic of Ireland. So about 2%, just over 2% of the population. So we are a small minority a growing minority, but still a small minority and likely to remain a small minority uh, in the future. But Ireland is becoming more diverse. And, you know, when I was, uh, when I was in school in Northern Ireland, I was educated in Northern Ireland, there was a change to place. Because I remember when I started school, we had our I classes, religious instruction. And by the time I left school, it had become RE, it had become religious education. And I think that's more than a matter of semantics. Religious instruction, uh, Evangelical Alliance would strongly hold, is the duty of parents, not of schools. That it's the responsibility of parents to, to teach their religious beliefs to their children. So we would be in favour of religious education because you cannot just, of course, write religion out of the school curriculum altogether because religion does play a huge part in the world and in society. And that's not going to change. Um, I, I remember in the 1960s and 1970s, a sociologist was saying how the world was becoming so secular that religious belief was going to die out. That hasn't happened. The world has become more secular, but also intense religious belief has grown and is growing around the world. So there is a great need for children to be educated about religions and about different religious beliefs. Now, in a society that's become more diverse, how do we reflect that in schools and in religious education? And I guess there's several courses we can take. One would be domination, where majority rules and the, the largest religious groups basically control education uh, it, that's funded by the taxpayer, and the minorities just have to, they have to suck it up. As, as somebody has said to me when I've talked about this, well, if you don't like it, why don't you emigrate? Uh, a second option to domination is segregation, where we have different schools for different religious groups. Really not practical, uh, certainly not practical in smaller communities. I mean, you, you can now have a rural, small town or village in Ireland with 20 different religious groups and non-religious groups, including atheists and agnostics. That's not practical. A, th a third course is let's pretend all religions are the same. Let's pretend that it's all just one God being worshipped in different ways. Again, for many religious groups, that's not going to fly because you have, I mean, we have here people with different worldviews. We are not here on a common platform as Evangelical Alliance along with the Amadai Muslims and Atheist Ireland to say, well, deep down we all believe the same thing. We don't. 
We believe very contradictory things. We have very different world views. And just pretending that those sharp differences and contradictions don't exist, and uh, that, that's actually not an option. That's not an honest option. And it's not going to produce our children as well-rounded adults who have an understanding of the role religion plays in the world today. And so I would advocate, um, and that's why I'm on a common platform here on this with Atheist Ireland and the Amadan Muslims, is that what's needed is a new, for the state to provide, through the education system, a neutral uh, environment for talking about religion and learning about religion. Where children are not, in school time, uh, indoctrinated or uh, tried for faith formation to place, uh, take place at that time. That's the job of the churches, that's the job of parents. But the children would be encouraged to talk about what they believe and hear about what others believe and learn about other religions in, in a neutral atmosphere. Because when there's a neutral atmosphere and no one is being favoured, we are able to be honest about our differences and about our different worldviews and to show mutual tolerance, mutual respect to one another, but also to be able to hold our own beliefs without feeling that somehow somebody's rights is being trampled on. Thank you. Jane? <clears throat> Hi, uh, my name is Jane Donnelly. I'm from Atheist Ireland. I'm uh, the Human Rights Officer of Atheist Ireland. And I deal with issues on the ground in relation to religion and education in our school system. Now, a few years ago, if you had said to me that I'd be sharing a platform with uh, a Muslim and an evangelical Christian, I would have not believed that. But as the years have passed, I discovered and I got to know many Muslim parents and Christian parents. And uh, we all have one thing in common, and that is that our children are discriminated against in the education system. We love our children just like all families love their children. Um, we had the same experience. I, I used to sit in, um, I sat in RTE once in a studio, and there's a lot of discussion after some of these programs on religion and education and all that. And uh, I discussed with a Muslim parent um, what was happening to their child in um, a school in Ireland. And I just made a great connection with that parent because we were both hurt by what was happening to our children in the education system. As the years went by, um, I, f I discovered that our children were friends. They are the children that sit at back of the classroom. They are the children that sit at the back of mass. They are the children that are isolated in schools and made to feel different. And they become firm friends. And they don't have an issue with religion, that you are the other. They get on because they have they become comrades and they feel that they are outsiders. And it's a strange thing that something good can come out of something so absolutely awful sometimes. Um, last year, we took a student with us to meet the Taoiseach and the Minister for Education. And this student told the Taoiseach and Jan O'Sullivan, Minister for Education, how she felt about the school that she was in and how her two Muslim friends felt and how they were bullied by teachers and some students because they were not the right religion. Uh, her, she has friends that are Muslims and she has friends from different religions. So as the years went by, um, I suppose our children thought, well they certainly taught me a lesson that you can get on with other religions, other belief systems that are completely different from your own and you can move forward. And that is what I hope we are going to do and we have done. Um, another issue I would uh, um, like to discuss is that all schools in Ireland claim they are inclusive. They use these words, I've heard them all day. I've heard inclusive, 
diversity, pluralism, respect. From our perspective, those words can mean anything. It depends on who is saying them. They're not legally defined. Uh, if you look in the Education Act, it says that schools have to respect the ways of life in a democratic society. They have to promote respect. But nobody says what respect means and what does inclusion mean. It seems to us, when we're on the receiving end of this, that in Ireland, inclusion means that they can discriminate against you. So if we are moving forward, it would be really, really helpful if we could actually define what those words mean between us. Because uh, they can mean that your child will be left sitting in the back of the classroom when religion is going on. It can mean that in a second level school, they will be praying for atheists over the intercom. And these schools would say that they are inclusive. It can mean, like one parent told me recently, that he was looking for a school um, in Kerry, a second level school for his child. And he wanted to, an inclusive school. So he went around the different schools and they said, oh yes, they all said they were inclusive, they promoted diversity, and they had loads of different beliefs in the schools. And as an example, the principal said to him, um, we have this day and the children bring in on a piece of paper um, and their loved ones that have died and they're put up in the sports hall or the hall or whatever. And um, she brought Peter along to show him this. And Peter said, and it's my, but I have come from a non-religious perspective. Will I be included? Of course she said you'll be included. And in the hall was, she said, there it is. You bring their, all the children, bring their paper, and they put it up on a Christian cross. And the principal thought this was inclusive. And Peter, of course, is not going to send his child to that school. So moving forward, we feel uh, um, that we need to define those words. And we're not reinventing the wheel. Those words are defined, and they're defined in human rights law. There are, for the word respect, that is defined in human rights law. The word inclusion, that is defined. There has been, all these issues have been dealt with before at some stage, and we can find out, and we have found out, and we've looked at all these areas, what respect means. And um, from our point of view, I respect my colleagues here on the stage, and they can respect my worldview. And we need to move forward um, to move into an area where we belong in the school system. We don't want our children to continue to learn about uh, other beliefs and faiths from in the back of the classroom or in, in the back of a church somewhere when they're discussing it with each other. We want our children to opt in to an education that is objective, critical and pluralist. We want to belong in our country, in our republic. And we want people to recognise that secularism is a philosophical conviction. That we, as parents and as citizens and just as human beings, have exactly, exactly the same rights as religious parents. And we want our children to understand what inclusivity, diversity and pluralism mean. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> firstly, I just want to congratulate Sheikh Mohammed for a great presentation he had given and presenting the Benkress um, of what Islam teaches regarding interfaith, and I would fully agree with everything he has said. Like Sheikh Mohammed I, I, you know, I, I had over many years been living in London. I lived in Pakistan. I lived in the Middle East as well. Um, where I found myself on the basis of justice defending all faiths. I had one opportunity once where 
that you would know by the praying against the wall in London and unfortunately there are some uh, particular um, radical mindsets of Muslims who were abusing him and I stood in front of him to protect him of his right of worship. Afterwards when I got abused by these Muslims I told them that this is just the teaching of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu when he said that if you see a church or a synagogue being destroyed then you must go and defend it. So on these bases I grew uh, very strong uh, uh, emotions towards justice and I have written three things down here. One is minorities, the vice of minorities and justice and state and church because unfortunately when a state does not recognize the rights of the minorities and that means all minorities that includes religious as well as non-religious that they have the right of their say and of their opinion and in, in case of uh, in schools non-religious people have the right to ask those schools that they have the rights to have a say in that school and how they educate the children. And unfortunately, um, and, I don't, and I'm, not, I'm not picking any particular organization here, so I want to stress this point now, but uh, as an example, the Ahmadi Muslim community in Pakistan does not have a say. And we are severely persecuted based upon state and religious grounds. And therefore, when an Amity child goes to school or university, they don't know whether they will be allowed to complete their education, simply because they are considered a non-Muslim organization or they're not considered to be Muslims. And therefore, the circular state should be there. Pakistan was based upon its initiation was meant to be secular that all the rights of all religious groups and non-religious groups would be protected. And therefore the justice is not there. And unfortunately when I found, when I came back to Ireland in 2003, I found that the Ahmadi Muslim community here were facing a similar problem. When I started writing to schools and universities and uh, secular institutions, I just started getting replies saying that, well, you're not considered to be a vice of Islam. And where places I was invited to to speak, and then suddenly my name was removed on the basis that a Islamic organization within the university insisted that I should not be allowed to speak and represent Islam, which what I believe I am, a Muslim. So therefore, I was shocked to see national universities, four of them I would put in name, but I don't want to name them here, but who actually allowed to be forced by um, certain societies within the university that uh, you know don't allow this person here to come and speak, don't allow this person here to come and present themselves as a Muslim. And for me, this was shocking in a modern contemporary Republic of Ireland where my forefathers in 1916 before and afterwards fought for the freedom of this yet here I was an Irishman and a Muslim being uh, picked upon in, in a way where I was not allowed to have my say so that's why I'm totally against and that's why our community does not believe in uh, state and religion being together <coughs> They have to be separated because then the secular institution has no right to decide who is right and who is wrong, who is correct and who is not correct. Their only duty is to ensure that everyone has a proper education and as mentioned by everyone, that everyone in that school, in that university has the right to learn about everyone and anyone and anything. So this is why I feel what we're doing is extremely important and as Sheikh Omar Khadr mentioned in the beginning about something about being brave, believe me, when I mentioned to uh, some of my colleagues that I'm planning to sit on the same table 
with my conclusions and it is Ireland and, and then when I mentioned with the evangelist alliance I got looks from my kind of thing it is Ireland but when I had to explain to them that we have a lot in common there's a lot of common ground as um, Sheikh McCurdy mentioned in, in his speech in the Holy Quran and it's clear to us life has been deen there is no compulsion in religion and therefore I have not the right to compel or to be compelled and this is why I am standing in unity with these two uh, organizations in hope that a, a just educational system will come to the country. <coughs> Thank you. We'll be there. I think our time is just up to that one now. So we'll, we'll be around for the rest of the day if anybody wants to talk to us, particularly if anybody from other faith or non-religious belief groups want to speak to us about getting involved in what we're doing. We're moving a stage beyond dialogue we're getting involved in, in groups with different religious and non-religious beliefs, working together to protect all of our rights to hold and manifest our different beliefs, consistently not interfering with the human rights of others, um, by insisting that the state remains neutral. What we're looking for is not a pluralist state or a secular people, we're looking for the other way around, a secular state which is neutral between religions and atheism in order to protect the pluralist people and the right of the people to believe whatever it is that, that they believe. Um, so and in, in any case, you know, the state is enough to be worried about in terms of sorting out this world without sorting out the, the afterlife as well. So if, if we can, if anybody wants to talk to any of us afterwards, uh, we'll be around for the rest of the day. Thank you very much.